Thomas. She is the Louisiana Conference Volunteer Coordinator. If you'd like to go down and volunteer for a week or 30 days or a couple of days, your application passes her desk. Um, she is a delightful lady who uh, showed me around New Orleans when I was there in January. Um, Marva Mitchell, the Uptown Station Director, is here also today. She's down in the gym right now talking to the Sunday School classes. Connie will be down there at 1010 for more of a question and answer. And um, uh, they'll both be at the 5 o'clock service tonight. So let's welcome Connie. Amen and praise the Lord. I um, want to just say thank you, Woods Chapel Church. You guys have been wonderful. It has been a pleasure for me to meet your pastor, uh, Jeff Brinkman. I've, I've been calling him Bob Jepson <laughs> for a while before I met him, and now I know who he really is. But I haven't met Bob yet. Um, I'm enjoying this service so much. I feel like I want to become a member. Can I join this church today? <laughs> And I tell you, I feel like I'm at home um, when the band started playing just a closer walk with me. That's New Orleans style. <laughs> so um, that was a real blessing for me this morning. Well, my friend, my new found friend Jeff also told me that I have only a few minutes. So I'm going to keep to that <laughs> and uh, go forward. I want to talk to you this morning from the book of Acts, the 16th chapter, verses 6 through 10. And I would, if when you have time, read that entire chapter of the book of Acts. But if you would follow along with me right now, the book of Acts, the 16th chapter, verses 6 through 10. Paul and his companions traveled through the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. When they came to the border of Mysia, they tried to enter Bithymia, but the spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. So they passed by Mysia and went down to Tross. During the night, Paul had a vision, a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, Come over to Macedonia and help me. After Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel there. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, you know every heart, and right now we pray that you would open the eyes of their understanding that we all might see what the Spirit is saying to us this morning. Amen. I want to talk to you today about <clears throat> the vision to help. The vision to help. I, um, when I read this particular chapter of the, gospel, of the book of Acts, um, it really makes me think of the fact that all over the world and at various times, God, when he got ready to do a great move for his people, there was something called, in my mind, a spiritual disturbance that took place. Um, having been um, gone through what I've gone through in New Orleans, and you've seen pictures, and you've heard people talk about it, and you've seen the news, but most of the people are wondering, what message is it that God is trying to give us? What is he doing? What is he saying? And, 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 and what's going on? And I call this particular situation a spiritual disturbance. And this spiritual disturbance is a time when God, by his Holy Spirit, is trying to teach us how we fit into his plan. Did you know that God has a plan, a divine plan, for your life? And that he gives it to us by his Spirit. When we read this chapter and this passage in Acts that I just read, we see several times where the narrator made point that the Holy Spirit kept Paul and his companions from going a certain way. And then it says that he kept the Spirit of Jesus, which is also the Holy Spirit, he prevented him from going in a particular direction. 
And so this morning, I come to share with you how I believe that the Spirit of God comes to us to change our regular program of how we do things in the church. And I believe that, obviously, that now that we are trying to rebuild New Orleans, that we have to rebuild in a different way from the way we're used to doing things in the church, our normal plans. And the way we have to do it is by leading and learning to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And so what God does through his Holy Spirit is he speaks to us through vision. Um, our lesson today speaks of the vision of one we know as the Apostle Paul. It is a very familiar story known to us as the Macedonian call. The Bible says that Paul was headed in another direction, but was prevented by the Holy Ghost. If you live your life submitted and committed to God, the Holy Ghost will move you where he wants you to be. Do you believe that this morning? The trouble with many people is that they are not submitted to the Holy Spirit and will therefore continue on with their own way and never truly fulfill God's plan for their lives. Uh, nonetheless, Paul has this vision. And with this vision is a man from Macedonia asking Paul with, with all clarity to come over and help. And this speaks to me because before Katrina, I served as a pastor of a two-point charge. And, and, and we were ready to do some great things and put on some great programs. And I thought that it was a good way that the church would move into another direction. And then the disturbance took place. The storm came and the flood came. And so we had to have a change of plans. And then God, by his spirit, moved upon the heart of the bishop and appointed me into this new role. And I'm thinking to myself, what, how does this have anything to do with serving as a pastor in a church? And the more I am submitted to the Holy Spirit, the more I realize that God has another plan that's larger than what I could ever dream. It's a plan that neither, none of us would ever know or see unless we but follow one step at a time. And so here I am in an, having an opportunity to come to you as that person to say, come over and help. And to be thankful that your pastor had a vision and you all grasped that vision and have decided to be a part of the plan for this new move for the church. I mean, did any one of you ever think that You'd be in a position today where you're wanting to take off a month to go to New Orleans, Louisiana, to help people rebuilding in such a devastating way. I never knew something, such a thing would happen. But nonetheless, it did. And God is doing something by his spirit. The Bible says that Paul and his companions went right away and believed that um, they needed to preach the gospel. And you know, when I read this particular chapter, this whole chapter of Acts, I wonder to myself, what was it so great that they needed to do in Macedonia? What was the great need in Macedonia? And I really hope that you take time to read it because one of the things that Paul did when he got there is he helped a woman who had been a worshiper of God but had not heard the gospel of Jesus Christ crucified, dead, and rose from the grave, and there available for salvation, had never had it preached to her. And, I, and you know, that's a really important thing to, to be awakened to the life of Jesus Christ that we can now live, the fact that we can be alive in Christ. I know that I was born a Christian. I don't know about many of you. I was born a Christian born into a Christian family. And it took me a long time to realize that just because I was born into the Christian family, it did not make me a Christian. And so there are so many people, I think this woman represents the many of us that have this um, 
this thought process that all we have to do is just worship God. And many of us will leave Jesus out of the picture. I'm sh I don't know about you. I'm sure that you're not one of those people. But Jesus Christ is alive and available for salvation. And he's available to help change us into his image day by day. And so he preached this gospel to this woman and she was baptized. A part of what he did while he was there, the Bible said, is that there was a woman, a child that was demon possessed and he cast out the demon from this child. There are so many who are children that are vexed with demons. There are so many adults right now that are vexed with demons. In our New Orleans area, the mental health situation of people are just so widespread now. Things are so different. We all need counseling. We all are in need of counseling because of the vast situation and someone who will speak peace to our souls. And so when you go into the areas to help, it's more than just the bricks and the mortars, but it's the ability to speak peace and to to use the Spirit of God to, to help you connect with the people there. So the mental health situation of people is necessary. And then, just one other situation, there were so many great needs that, that Paul found, and just like Paul, you will find in your life as you continue on with whatever vision it is that God is asking you to move into, you will find that uh, you will need help yourself. <laughs> you will come to a position where I need the help myself. And Paul and Silas, there they were in jail, but they had to have a great prayer meeting. And the church has to make sure that we continue prayer with everything that we do. We have to begin with prayer. We have to include prayer in the middle, and we have to end with prayer in whatever it is that we're called to do. And so you may this morning be, have been working in one direction and feel this, this call of God pulling you to do something else, a vision from God to do something different. And there are just a few things that I want you to remember, just a few things I'm gonna, gonna share with you. When you're moving into your divine plan, the vision that God has given you for your life, the first thing to remember is do not be limited by where you are right now. Don't be limited with what it is that you're doing right now. Don't be limited with if you've been serving as a Sunday school teacher for so long. Whatever the thing you've been doing for 5, 10, or 30 years. Allow the Spirit to open you up and bring you and move you into that unlimited place where God is calling you. Had I been limited to serving as a pastor in a church, I would have not accepted this call to this new ministry. But God, by his spirit, opened my eyes so that I could move into that direction. And so many times God will put things in your way just so that you can move into that divine plan that he's called you to. And I just want you to remember that we must let go if we will be uh, true followers and move into that divine plan. And you know, the thing for me, is when I read this particular scripture passage, I see that the Bible said that God caused a great uh, earthquake to set Paul and Silas free while they were in prison. And sometimes God will cause something to happen. And it might be a natural disaster that we call natural disasters. That's not to say that I'm telling you this morning that God calls Katrina but there are times when God will cause things to happen in order for us to get our focus right, in order for us to free, be free to do what he's called us to do. The second thing I want you to remember this morning is always be led by the Holy Spirit, remembering that he is the enabling force for your vision to have power. If our works are going to have any power, if our works are going to be successful, we must remember that the Holy Spirit will be that enabling force. 
we must remember that as he guides, he will provide. And as I go out and as I talk to people, I'm constantly remembering the, the importance of praying for God's spirit to work in and through me in order to make, encourage people to come. So we just remember to be led by the Holy Spirit. I can remember when I, um, the third thing I want to say to you today, and this is the very last, is that you can be sure that it is a vision from God when you're trying to understand if God is moving you in a different direction. You can be sure that it is a vision from God if he's calling you to preach the good news. Many people have visions, and sometimes these visions are not exactly something that's going to set somebody free. Uh, the Spirit of the Lord comes upon us with vision to help, vision to make a difference, vision to preach the good news to the poor, to proclaim freedom from the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind. Vision comes to release the oppressed and to proclaim liberty, the, uh, the year of liberty. So I'm saying to you today is whatever it is that you think you're being led to, what does Christ have to do with it? What does the gospel have to do with it? If all the people come and, and into the city and help people, is it really going to help release the oppressed? Are you coming with that in mind? Or are you going to come with the wrong attitude? And many times our people, our volunteers, when they come in, we really need them to be flexible enough to be sensitive to how the Spirit is leading people when they go into a home. Because sometimes people, you may be going to rebuild a home, but sometimes people need you to just listen to them. Sometimes they need you to just help lift their burdens, help set them free of their oppression for that moment. And so remember that God gives us visions, but we must have the right vision in mind. And so Woods Chapel, for Woods Chapel, this is the year of the Lord's favor for you to bring life to the vision to help people in the Louisiana area. This is the year for you to go into all the world and preach the gospel, helping people to understand what the gospel really is. As there was a great need in Macedonia, there is a really great need in New Orleans. People are oppressed, they are downtrodden, blind to God's love, and they're prisoners to their only conditions. They are in need of the members of the body of Christ to be full of the Holy Spirit, who will provide powerful prayer meetings that will shake the very foundations of the things that have locked them in. Jesus Christ came into the world to seek and save out the lost. He came with a vision for the body of Christ, which is the church, to be transformed into his image. There is a vineyard out there in need of laborers, and God's spirit continues to call all who would be laborers into his vineyard. The harvest is still ripe. And even though we've sent over 25,000 volunteers into the Louisiana area to labor into the vineyard there, there's still at least 10,000 people whose homes, who are not in their homes, whose homes still need to be gutted and mucked out. So the harvest is still ripe, but the laborers are very few. Who knows what may happen while you give life and power to the vision that God has given you. And I stand before you this morning and ask you to come over to New Orleans and help. In the name of the Father and of the Son, amen. <clears throat> Now, we've got about 10 more minutes if you want to talk a little bit longer. They get upset if I let them out early. Well, I would like to talk a few more minutes. I would... 
Thank you. I guess I was rushing because I really don't like to to be disobedient to people, and I get pretty excited when I start talking about the relationship between the God's Spirit working in us to do a work. And I really feel that it's very important for for us to get uh, stronger or more sensitive. We all need to be more sensitive to the to the Holy Spirit in our lives, no matter where we are. Had I not been sensitive to the Spirit, when I evacuated from New Orleans with my family, I ended up in Dallas, Texas. And so I was engaged at the time. And I said to my fiance, my then fiance, I said, for the first time in my life, I don't have a vision. I, I just don't know what God is trying to tell me to do. He kept telling me, God, those people in Louisiana, your people, they need you. They need, he just kept telling me that. But I, I couldn't see it. I was in Dallas and I saw the, the churches there, the wonderful churches there with all of their programs. And, and there were lots of New Orleans, New Orleanians there at the, at, in Dallas. And I kept saying to myself, I need to do something to help people with their mental health. I need to open up some type of situation so people can come and talk and I can advocate for them and do all the things that I knew to do. Well, I was like Paul, I was prevented from doing those things. Things kept coming in my way. And one day, the Spirit of God moved me to drive, and I hated driving. Before Katrina, you couldn't get me to drive longer than 30 minutes, an hour to get anywhere. <laughs> well, it took me uh, 24 hours to drive to Dallas, Texas, when we were trying to evacuate. And, but the spirit, when I was in Dallas, moved me to go to Baton Rouge. And my parents and my family, we were all still crazy because we couldn't get back into the city. So, and I did, there, were no, there was no housing in Baton Rouge, so what I was doing didn't make sense. And many times God will cause us to do things that just don't make sense to yourself or to other people, those people who love you. But I had to go, so I got in my car. My mom and my aunt came with me, and we drove to, down to Baton Rouge, stayed with the, um, one of her rel my mother's relatives. And um, the next day, I got a call from the bishop's office they were fussing at me because they said, we've been trying to reach you. Where have you been? And I'm thinking, well, I've been driving. And they said, well, we need you to come over here <laughs> and do this favor for us. I said, what favor? We need you to be the volunteer director for the storm and help people to get help. And, sit. and I said, Lord. And my mom, she just knew. She said, this is the divine plan, the divine plan that God has for you now. And so my, I, I received the peace in my heart. And I went on to the office, didn't know what I was doing. Couldn't, un, you know, tried to figure it out. But there were so many calls coming in that it didn't take any time to figure it out. And so when God is calling us to do something different, if we would just be obedient to it and let go of what we think is best, what we have in our minds, and so that's all I'm saying today is just to, when God, there's a minute, there's a spiritual disturbance that's going on, and God is calling us to be sensitive to where he's leading and guiding us. And, it's, and he has the blueprint in his hand. And so God has, has um, helped me to put a lot of things in place to help volunteers get to Louisiana. And Encore, who supports our conference, they, they um, commend me on the work that I've been able to do because I received no training to do it. And we've done an, an excellent job. And this year when they thought, and they told us last year, Encore did, that we wouldn't have the same level of volunteers that we had last year because people, you know, would get old to people. And with that in mind, God just gave me a way, um, helped me find a way to put something together. And so now we have almost double the amount of volunteers coming in 
to help us. So, you know, it, it, it's God's plan, and I keep telling people that I have just released myself into God's apprentice program, <laughs> you know, where he shows me what to do, and I'm doing it by the Holy Spirit. And the good thing about God is when I make a mistake, unlike Donald Trump, I don't get fired. <laughs> Amen. When Katrina struck, all of us felt a storm. And, and we did many things to help. And for 30 days, our gym collected things and we sent truckloads of things down. But then we went back to our lives. And what you've been living is your life. And those who have been left down there, most of them don't have their life. And for them to come here this weekend and stay in a warm home that someone owns, to have food in the cupboard and all the comforts of home, it's a vacation. For you, it's your life. For them, it's a vacation. There are many wonderful mission programs in our church, and I'm happy for every one of them. But if you are not involved in one and you are looking for a place to make a difference in the world, New Orleans needs your help. There are so many volunteers, they need people to help coordinate volunteers. And that's what they've asked us to help with. So for a weekend or a week or 30 days, if you can help in any way, please let me know. At least, please, hold these people up in our prayers and let's be praying always about uh, not just enjoying our life and our comfort, but uh, following God's purpose in giving ourselves away in his name. Let's stand and join our hearts and hands as we close with our song of sending, Grace Alone.